Hey guys! I was a little bit busy in the last few weeks, so I couldn't really make as many videos as I probably would have liked to do. But today I have a little bit of time, <laughs> so here we go. Um, so far my channel has been pretty focused on the Folio Society for good reason, because they are just so beautiful. But today I thought I would show you one of my absolute favorite contemporary illustrators besides Omar Ayan, who I already mentioned before, and that is Benjamin Lacan. He's a French illustrator and I have followed him for years now. And I basically love everything that he illustrates. So I have started collecting him and today I thought I would start us off with these beautiful Alice in Wonderland editions. <laughs> I love that both books follow the same theme and have an inverted color scheme. So book one is turquoise with a red spine and book two is red with a turquoise spine. As you can see, they're both decorated with a lovely ornamental frame, lots of tiny shiny details, especially for the looking glass with the mirror behind Alice. And they just look gorgeous. The spines likewise have been lovingly decorated and on the back there's a tiny illustration, which is just fun in my opinion. The end papers are really vibrant, really fun with these card patterns and I adore them. As I said before, Benjamin Lacombe is a French illustrator and he has a very unique style. His Alice figure is very delicate and pale, kind of like a porcelain doll. But the colors around her are very vibrant, very saturated. I personally think that there is a lot of loveliness to his illustrations and everything that he does, but there's also always this kind of surreal quality, sometimes even ranging into the bizarre, which lends itself very well to the Alice universe. The book has lots of fun details besides the illustrations such as playing with font arrangement and size, and it even has a few sort of interactive features. I think this was done especially well here with this unfoldable image that features the sentence about Alice growing in giant letters and then shows her bursting out of the page. There are also lots of black and red drawings all over the pages and fun arrangements besides the full color pictures, and that is something I really love in a book. some info about the illustrator. This too is to me a big plus. The Through the Looking Glass edition is very similar to Alice in Wonderland in every respect. Like I said before, I really love the mirror detail here on the cover. It looks pretty. The end papers are very fun yet again and in this edition we see some old and new faces, again with very creative desi designs. And the two books perfectly complement each other, which makes it very satisfying to have both of them. You will probably notice that one of my editions here is in French, whereas the other one is in German. And the reason for that is that I have studied abroad for four years in Belgium and while most of my time was spent in the Flemish speaking part of the country, there was this neat little biannual medieval and fantasy festival in Valony called the Antinoise that I visited. 
I discovered this Alice in Wonderland edition there and I had to have it. <laughs> Now back then in 2015 there had been no translation yet and I didn't know if there would even be one so I just couldn't walk past it. Then last year Through the Looking Glass actually came out in German just as Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> and since I was back in Germany by then I bought that one in German. In case that seeing them has made you interested and in maybe having them for yourself, I feel like I should mention uh, both these books, Alice in Wonderland and Alice Through the Looking Glass, illustrated by Benjamin Lecomte, have also been released in English, which is not always a given with Benjamin Lecomte because oftentimes you only get his book in a specific subset of languages. So, for example, I own The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but that one I was only able to get in Spanish. So, my Spanish is pretty rudimentary. My dad is from a Spanish-speaking country, but I myself, I haven't picked up too much. And then other books I have only found in French. But anyway, it doesn't really bother me too much that my two editions are in different languages, one French and one German because I can read well enough in both, while well, German obviously, but also French, I can read pretty decently. Maybe not speak it, but read it. And I just love these two editions so much that I position them right in front of my bed. So when I wake up, the first thing I see is those two books standing there, having the sunlight hit them just in the right angle. And you have these Alice titles and all these decorations lighting up in silver. It's, it's a nice way to wake up. It's very beautiful. <laughs> and I know that the Folio Society released a very beautiful limited edition, which is gone by now. But it has always been outside of my price range, now definitely, <laughs> and secondhand. And though I love Sandwick's work so much, for some reason it's completely irrational, but having loved these Benjamin Lacombe editions for so long, it feels kind of like cheating to look at other beautifully il illustrated Alice editions. And you know, Alice is not really a book that I need to have in all kinds of editions. Maybe because I didn't really grow up with it. Like when I was a tiny child, I saw the Disney movie and that was all the exposure I had to Alice in Wonderland. It was only when I was around 16, 17 that I got into this phase where I bought a huge stack of English classics but from the Penguin classic set, you know, these tiny little yellow and orange books that back then they were like two or three euros a piece. So that's when I read Alice for the first time. And I liked it, but yeah, not enough to start a huge collection. Though I do enjoy the aesthetics that it uh, spawned. You know, all these kind of Alice in Wonderland designs, Alice in Wonderland gothic style, the video game. <laughs> so these things I enjoyed. And in other news, I have been on library thing for a while now because I like to check out the uh, Folio Society the Woody's group. But then I thought, why not catalog the books that I own on there if I have a profile there anyway? So I did that, and you can find a link to that in my YouTube profile in case you're interested to know what kind of stuff I exactly have in my library. Because, you know, I usually enjoy looking for other people's lists, so I thought, hey, why not? <laughs> and I organized everything by tags, and it's not everything that I own because I still have all the books that I own since I was like two years old. <laughs> so that would be a bit much. But I kind of picked the highlights, I guess, as I would call them. 
So, you know, if you're interested, you can check it out. If not, then don't. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> no. And, um, otherwise, I hope that you still have a great day today. And see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.